take a quick look at land speeders, what I, my opinions on land speeders, you may have your own. We have a couple of land speeders here. We have the cheap and cheerful one with, uh, you'll see it better from the side, heavy flamer, multi multi, big fan of this. And we have the Typhoon missile launcher land speeder, which I'm not so certain about, but Land speeders, guys, they're small, fast vehicles. They're generally pretty much always in the fast section of your book. Most of the marine players can take them. They generally have armor, they always have armor 10 all around. You can take a scout speeder, but I'm not going to chat about this at the minute. But uh, land speeders being a fast vehicle, you move that flat out, you're going to get your four up cover saved the entire time. And they have some good things that you can do, some bending of the rules and whatnot that you can, not bending of the rules, but some nice things you can do. Uh, the bog standard Land Raider is generally 50 points. This one here, add on multi multi is coming at 70 points. The ones here with the Typhoon missile launchers are coming in at roughly 100 points. This here for 70 points I think is, is great value. Even if you just take the standard guy with a heavy boulder, for 50 points, you can always swap that for a flamer for free. In all the books I've seen, you can swap it for a flamer for free. But if I was just going for the bog standard 50 point guy, it's hard, I might be tempted to keep my heavy boulder because if you do get around the back of some vehicles, you have that chance of taking them out. But for the extra 20 points for the multi multi, it's well worth it. It all, all of a sudden becomes a huge danger to your opponent, something he can't let go and at 70 points, it's more dangerous than its points value, guys, because a multi-multi flying about the board, especially if you play Vulcan Histan, where you get them re-rolls, is a great thing. All of a sudden, the land raiders that are coming across the board become very soft. One of my favorite tactics with these guys here and with the bog standard guys is generally you'll find on your board you don't have a huge big bit of no man's land. There's like points that vehicles will use to drive through land raiders especially because they don't get that dozer blades what i like to do with these is i fly them directly across the board at the correct time now it's not not necessarily in turn one you wait hide this guy behind a ruin behind a hill show no threat to, to your opponent with them once a land raider gets the sort of the choke point the narrow point fly this out and park right in the middle of it so that the land raider either has to drive around you through some terrain or shoot you or the guys inside can get out and fight you but if they're fighting a vehicle it costs between 50 and 100 points a unit of terminators are not getting their points back straight off four up cover save they shoot at you and sixes to hit you in combat if you have squadron of three of these it can work really well because you can set them out there, line them across that the Land Raider basically has to fight you. It has no choice. And fighting three of these guys coming up maybe 150 points if you take the regular unupgraded guys, but I would usually take the multi-multi with them. Makes them excellent value for them points because I, I at this point, am using them as a roadblock. The next turn, if they've survived, if the Land Raider's shot, you've got your cover saves, their shooting's bounced, or they've got their Terminators out like an idiot to fight you, you've got a multi multi sat on top of that there. Land Raider's dead, maybe some Terminators are dead. You've got generally a heavy boulder or a heavy flamer. One of them there all of a sudden is being very useful to you. This is the way I use this one as a roadblock and as really annoying to the opponent for its points value. The things you don't want to do with them, I set them out in the open so that some boy like me with lots of rockets will just shoot them down. You really need to give them cover and generally I think roadblocking with them works better than shooting because it's just such a wind up for your opponent. Even at that if you park this right in front of a Land Raider one inch away and Land Raider decides I'll ram you, he's getting four for the front armor and plus one for being a tank. So he's only ramming you at strength five, so it's not really 
worth his while. Like if it's a land raider with an assault cannon or something, he's better off to assault cannon you. Even have uh, flame sorber cannons, he's better off to hit you with them. But it works great as a roadblock, guys. For me, the best use of them. Here we have our other, our typhoon pattern land, uh, land spider. These can work. I have a Space Wolf Armour list that uses nine of these combined with 15 long fangs with rockets. So it's coming in at 30 plus shots with missiles each turn. It does use up all your points and all your points are basically in missiles and if the person turns up with something that's Armour 14 you're under pressure but it gives you a devastating amount of shooting. There is some good army lists out here, out and about, with nine of these in the army list, all firing their missiles each turn. For me, they end up being roughly 100 points each to fire two missiles. They are expensive, but if you have some nice line of sight block and terrain, some nice high hills like this, trees like that, that you can get in behind and you can choose when they move and fire your missiles. All of a sudden it becomes very cheap. All of a sudden you're going, I have a huge amount of missiles to fire. It works. Personally with this standard one, I wouldn't take units of one. I think you need to have lots of them. At least six maybe. Three you could get off with. They give you a good fire support that your regular marine isn't going to run over and combat you and win that combat even if some marines get to you or some gene stealers get you to fight if you survive that charge you can just fly away and shoot them no downside to it whatsoever these are my two standards of land speeder that i would take i think they're a very useful little vehicle i think the bog standard one at 50 points pure roadblock pay the 20 points get a multi melt on it swap your heavy boulder for heavy flamer it becomes anti-vehicle anti-troops don't expect them to be about at the end of the game they do a job then they die because a guy with a boulder can take them down they do have their weaknesses armor 10 obviously but they are one of those vehicles that can do two jobs for you even the cyclone missile launcher guy or typhoon missile launcher guy can still perform that roadblock is just a slightly more expensive roadblock but if it comes the end of the game and you're trying to stop somebody driving onto your objective you fly this up you park right in front of them and all of a sudden it's i can't get to your objective unless i get very lucky so what do you think of them guys personally i'm a fan of them if you're vulcan histan in your space marine army and making them melt as twin length I believe you can even, I know, you can even fit two multi multis onto one. I've used this. It doesn't really work, guys, because generally you're only, you're only getting to fire the one. But maybe, maybe you've, you've used this. Personally, I tried it. It didn't work. But stick some comments in below, guys. I'm a fan of these things. I think they're a good, solid unit. Without any upgrades, they do a certain job for you. With upgrades, they do... A better job for you but for me the 70 point multi multi heavy flamer one is probably the best so stick your comments in below chat see what you think what way do you use them do you think i'm being a bit rough just using them as a roadblock personally i think they're great roadblock and guys i'll get on and do another video